Well, hello there. This is Charlie with Contemplating the Cosmos, and uh, I'm joined uh, by a very special guest, Mark Sargent. And uh, I, he probably needs no introduction, but maybe with my uh, a lot of the people that follow my channel, maybe you do, because uh, the majority of the people that uh, follow my channel uh, have a, a big interest in the paranormal and, and like near-death experiences and stuff like that. Um, but I've dabbled quite a bit in the, the Earth cosmology, you might say, uh, or, or the shape or whatever the case may be. So uh, I actually, you know, uh, with let me just do my little prequel here. I am doing a pre-recording with Mark because uh, I am actually sitting on a, a strike because uh, YouTube decided that uh, Mark wasn't going to be on my uh, live stream today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyways, so we'll just go ahead and do a pre-recording and uh, get the ball rolling, and uh, you know, I'll just have to post it later. So, um, anyways, uh, Mark, you are uh, you're looking at the byproduct of something that you have created, hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is part of that right here, actually. So you you, you can see that uh, the Earth does spin. Look at. It's very nice. The, 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 that is amazingly accurate. I don't even know where you where you acquired such an object. I'll, I'll tell you a little back uh, history on this one. Be, uh, yeah. Like my my brothers, my two brothers and my sister all are thinking I'm a psycho because I decided to venture down the the, uh, the rabbit hole of trying to figure out if what Mark Sargent was saying was true. And uh, now, again, I, I didn't really listen to you as much as I did, like, Rob Skiba. You know, I was kind of right. prefacing that, uh, like, when I was reaching out to you that you had met Rob Skiba and talked to him on a personal level on, I'm sure, several occasions. Oh, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, but, you know, um, when I was explaining this to my brother, his kids just so happened to be kind of observing our, our discussion and my niece, who uh, is like, I think, 18 now, uh, she she's really good at crocheting. You can see here. She's like, I, I made this for you, Uncle Charlie, because I wanted you to know that this is a globe that we live on. <laughs> so, anyways, <clears throat> nice. Uh, I appreciated the the extra effort that she put into it. But again, uh, indoctrination indoctrination runs deep, and um, and anyways. So maybe I know you've been in like a, probably a million interviews and I don't know what kind of interview this could be other than just being as transparent as possible. <laughs> Cause honestly, this is the more, the more crude down to earth podcast that you kept, could possibly be on. Um, and anyways, That's good. So maybe, maybe you could give me a little, a little tidbit about you. I know a lot of people know that you kind of started with the flat earth clues and, Sure. You were like a video game guy early on, and or you want you want me to talk about the stuff beforehand? Well, sure. Maybe just give a, a little brief uh, overview of where what your what your philosophy is entering into this mindset. My philosophy entering into this was that I had an opinion. If you don't get married and have kids, and you get to be fifty. Or close, mm -hmm. let's say mid 40s, you have a lot of free time on your hands. Enough time that you can do just about anything you want and research anything you want. And in my case, because I've been old enough to remember when the internet was a new thing, I went down just about every rabbit hole you could think of because mm -hmm. there wasn't there wasn't enough content. You know, you, you finished the internet sometimes back in the early days. <laughs> there yeah. was only so many pages. And some conspiracies I liked and some conspiracies I didn't. And I went, to, I, I have an opinion now on every conspiracy you could possibly dream of right mm -hmm. now. And my qualifier for if I thought a conspiracy was legit was that I couldn't improve upon it. And that science sounds kind of arrogant, but I've always been a creative problem solver. And I did high level tech support troubleshooting for a number of years. And that if you give me enough time, I can find a creative way of solving something that may be completely unorthodox. 
anyway, so when I look, so I look at a, a, even a conspiracy, I don't look at it like, you know, white hat, black hat. And it's like, oh, you know, because everyone knee jerk reaction is, oh, well, obviously there's evil men doing these horrible conspiratorial things. And I come back and I say, well, I don't really care about, you know, I'm not questioning their, their evilness. What I'm questioning is why they did it. You know, yeah. I, I th think rarely do people in handlebar mustaches, you know, <laughs> wringing their hands, you know, no, no. <laughs> I'll make them pay. I'll make them all pay. You know, <laughs> rarely is it that. It's usually the, it's an ends that justify a means. And the means sometimes is really, really horrible. Um, it's the old, old question that we throw out to people, which yeah. is, would you kill a child to, to cure cancer? Now, some, a lot of people would say no, but some people would say yes. And then you throw in the impossible, which is, would you kill your own child? Even though you know it's the greater good, you can't do it. You can't do it. We've seen it in movies a million times. Let's sacrifice the entire busload of people to rescue that one person out there. The chances of success slim to none, but you're going to do it anyway, mostly for plot devices. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the whole preface. So when I go in, when I went into flat earth, I looked at it like, okay, I, I had to answer all the questions that everyone else would ask me, which was, uh, who, what, when, where, how, why, right? It's mm -hmm. like, and if I could answer those to myself, uh, satisfactorily, then I figured I could do it for anybody else. And so that's why it took me so long. I hammered on it for nine months. Just hammered on yeah. this thing, you That's know. Longer than I did, actually. Lost a lot of sleep, and then finally, when I had it, if you've ever in university, you take these blue book tests, and I've I've done blue book tests where I'm I'm turning them in, and I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure I've got it, but there's mm -hmm. that little nagging thing in the back of your head going, oh, did I ace it or did I not ace it? And you, you think you missed something, and so that's why I put it out to the internet. I go look. I can't prove the globe anymore. So here's why. Here's my bup, 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 bup. tell me where I'm wrong. Here's my phone number, all my contact information. Track me down, which is how Rob tracked me down. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 2015, and that's how it started in the beginning of 2015. And since then, wow, what, what a ride so far. Um, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't even know what the hell I'd be doing. I mean, we did um, uh, three books on Amazon. Uh, I don't even know how many interviews between four and 500, I think, um, a Netflix documentary, uh, conferences. And I, I don't know how many meetups, don't know how many conferences and a commercial in Australia, all sorts of fun stuff. And now, yeah, it's just, I, I sit back and look at all this stuff and it's like, wow, I, you, all I wanted was a freaking question answered. And you know, you know uh, I, I, I gotta say how do you okay this is my question to you how do you feel about single-handedly being responsible for the youtube algorithm change shift <laughs> i won't i won't take credit for that <laughs> however i will take credit well i will take credit for speeding up the process mm -hmm. that was weird i i was one of the few people in the world that cared about the youtube algorithm numbers to, to the extent, you know, there's lots know, of people you were blasting those numbers out there. Like we have like some of the hard, hardest hit like searches for, you know, flat earth and. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're still out there. They're still on my channel. Um, yeah. the, um I, I was one of the few people. Yeah. There are people, any, any really, really solid YouTubers will look at the metrics, the metrics, mm -hmm. you know, what's trending, what's popular. What can I, what can I ride on its coattails? No matter what it is, which is why every single YouTube channel, over a hundred thousand people uh, did a flat earth video at some point. Um, but I was the only guy that was saying <laughs> that stupid cheer that we, we know in high school. It's like, we got more, look at the score. We got more, look at the score. I was pointing at the scoreboard constantly going, yeah. look, <laughs> like we got we more. Not just winning. We were like, we're crushing it. It's like, we have more than NASA. We have more than the Beatles. We have more than Lady Gaga. In fact, in fact, we were running out of targets. We were running out of people in front of us on the race. Um, which is why the um, my my one of my favorites was you know uh, catching Donald Trump yeah. in uh, 2018, where I said that uh, we 
you know, he was he was just he was always one million ahead of us. And I was looking at it, working out the math. It's like, oh, it's going to take us at least six months to catch him. And then like four weeks you know, later, somebody calls me. It's like, we caught him. We freaking caught him. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and and I made a video called Flat Earth Passes the President of the United States. And it's still on there. It's still out there now. And nice. that's when the, the, the boys at YouTube, the, the super nerds, the people that know what the hell they're doing, you know, that's when they shut it all down. When they um, uh, when they came back and they just quietly removed the search bar, you know the search number results from from YouTube for all time back in 2018, and it, it was really and again they did it because like how who's gonna miss it? We missed it, <laughs> but a lot of other people didn't, and so to this day, if you even though uh, YouTube is owned by Google, the biggest search engine in the world, the search engine 101 search results is not there anymore. So. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 there's things. Uh, look, I, I, the community has to take credit. I mean, you know, I've got copies of magazines on my desk, right? You know, um, Popular Science and Newsweek and mm -hmm. Skeptic, where Flat Earth, you know, is doing was just crushing it. I'm not going to take credit for those. The community takes credit for those, and I'm not going to say I single handedly did anything. What I did was I was the catalyst. There was already Flat Earth material. Okay, I'll give you. You want to know my secret? I'll tell you my secret. Go for it. Let's hear this. There was already flat earth material out there by a handful of people, which you saw in the I documentary. Mean, Eric Dubay was putting stuff out already. Eric right? Dubay had stuff that was already out there. Matt Boylan, yeah. Yeah. he didn't have Power the yeah. yeah, Matt Boylan was out there. There were some people from Europe that were they were out, they were doing stuff. The problem was is that it wasn't easy enough to 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 digest. It wasn't easy enough to understand. Mm -hmm. So what I did was uh, because I'm a big because of my software training, you know, I, I trained people in very broad software, boiled it down for blue collar factory workers, how to understand. It. It's like, okay, this software is really, really huge. You only need to know ten percent of it, and here's the ten percent. I'm going to break that down into parts that you will never be able to forget. And I took that into flat Earth, and I said, okay, I want to break this down to where the average person will just not glaze over. You know, and what well, because uh, there was no math, right? There was barely any science. It was really just connecting the dots. I said, if this true is this true is this is this true, then that must everything must point to flat Earth. That's all I did. And what happened was, so I ended up being the 101 book because there was no 101 book. Uh, Eric yeah. Dubay was was second year, very easily. Uh, Matt Boylan, second year. The people in Europe, second year. So what happened was, and I heard this from so many people, which was. Yeah, I, I did the flat earth clues. Oh, I get it. It's flat earth, <laughs> right? And then they turned around and they said, oh, I can understand Eric Dubay's work now. <laughs> and so I am known as the 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 first year, if, if flat earth was a university, I'm the first year professor. I'm the guy that you talk about in past tense <laughs> by your third year. Yeah, which is hilarious. But people, you know, if you know anyone that's like a big reader or in in university, they'll say, "Oh yeah, well, you know, my freshman year I was into such and such, but now I'm into this." Oh yeah, you yeah, know, he was great. He was great. That book's on the shelf, gathering dust. And I, and I don't mind. I, I absolutely don't mind because people, I get apologies all the time. It's like, yeah, you're I, a good stepping stone. Yeah, I, I, there you go. There, there's my there's my t-shirt i'm the stepping stone uh, <laughs> well i mean in some ways it was for me i mean i granted in, indirectly i was affected by you in that way i, I heard the interview with rob skiva after oh you did he, after he was on the uh, uh you were on canary cry radio that's what it was right and, that was, that uh, was... And then rob heard you yep. and it was like holy crap i gotta call this guy and uh now I had been following Rob Skiba before I ever heard anything about Flat Earth, right? Right. And uh, I always appreciated his, you know, you know, his biblical stuff because, I mean, that's kind of the area that I branched from, you know. And um, so as I've ventured down this road, I started, and then also the the whole concept of philosophy being our viewing lens for understanding anything. Uh, I started realizing that everybody branches out from a, a bias perspective right. and uh, they're just trying to validate it and that's it. So yep. um, uh, I guess you could say, uh, I, I forget if it was early 2015, April, maybe. 
for when, what rob rob's video rob, uh, april gotcha. april 15th 2015 yeah episode, yeah episode number 27 on tfr i only know this by heart because rob included it in a slide for his presentations from then moving forward which was april 15th 2015 the day mark Sargent ruined my life and and i didn't even know he was going to do it and then the first conference which was from the documentary i had people coming up and it's like do you know what rob put up on screen i go no what when he put up but he did that for a reason because he said he did it because i was the out i was the insurance policy in case something went wrong so in case all of a sudden somebody came out and said oh yeah by the way here's the evidence that crushes flat earth forever right and and, and flat earth loses that way rob could say well i was only 98 percent in here's the guy that that uh that you know steered me down the wrong path yeah. brilliant really way of, of doing it but it worked and because it got laughs during the show you know during his first thing oh he was never going to not include it that slide was always going to be there it was too easy yeah. too easy to do at my expense which was fine totally totally good i, I loved it yeah so i mean Granted, I, I uh, when when Rob uh, kind of ventured down that road with you in April, uh, I actually I kind of backed off a little bit from him. I'm like, eh, I just don't know if I'm. Lots ready of people did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I completely just dis dis dismissed him or anything, uh, but I I got in that mindset like, eh, I got it. Honestly, there's just too many things to embrace in order to accept everything with this concept i mean sure. you, gotta, you gotta you know see the flaws in the moon landing and and that's actually the thing that i had to embrace first because i didn't really do any investigation on the moon landing right so uh anyways but then i i ventured down that road of course and and uh lo and behold i ended up deep in this rabbit hole and uh so i would say probably fall of 2015 i would say six months later uh, I decided to uh, make my first videos on this uh, uh, 4VZ Truth channel. Uh, I had the channel for a long time. I just never made videos. But right. I'm like, I'm ready to make some content. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up doing like a three-part rant where I, I called it Flat Earth Philosophy. And these were the first topics that I ever addressed on my channel uh, was, was the Flat Earth. And thank you for helping me uh indirectly mo motivate me to start this channel uh you know producing content i guess nice uh, well good good for you that's awesome and and i'm i'm flattered yeah i mean again i'm not i'm not going to give you all the credit but <laughs> <laughs> but uh anyways i uh but the, see i met tiger dan th through those three videos i met um Kim you Kevin. met tiger dan oh no you ran into tiger dan just on my video he, right, he commented right, right, right. on my video yeah. And uh, and Puket Word, I guess. Uh, yep. They were both of them were like one of my first ten subscribers. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, okay. uh, anyways, but obviously Tiger Dan flipped out, and uh, Puket Word's actually doing a lot for the yeah. community. And uh, yeah. But anyways, um, so I the the main reason I decided to reach out to you because honestly. You know, like, and I called this flattening the curve because, <laughs> you know, how nowadays the way. I've heard that like, term before. Where have I heard that? <laughs> the flattening the curve. Boy, I, I'll think of it. Go, keep going. Are you are you being sarcastic? or? Yes, of course. I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of gullible. So. Yeah, no, you uh, got to remember my channel was, my YouTube channel was put into jail, YouTube jail for three months because I did about 25 rants about that topic. Oh, no. Well, uh, I'm already sitting on a strike for a video that was like almost two years old. Anyways. My uh, oldest, my oldest is four. Just, What's that? Know, my oldest strike is four years old. Uh, I got a strike four years after the fact. Oh, are you serious? But yeah, oh, it was man. an interview with David Weiss, believe it or not, um, that David did with another channel, and I just threw it up on mine, and the guys still can't get the taste out of their mouth, so they just, in fact, they did last month. They came back, and it's like, I got the strike, I'm going, I don't even recognize this video, and then uh, the guy that I work with, he goes, he goes, he goes, that's from four years ago, I go, holy <laughs> smokes, it's got to be a record. That's yeah, awesome. I don't know, I mean, uh, I somehow was on their radar because of this this uh you know well do you want me to tell you why i you yeah. you're on you're on their radar now when i started two years ago and i'll be careful because i know you're going to post this on youtube right yeah 
try. Okay. So two years ago, <laughs> when all this started, I started doing a rant series about my thoughts on the whole thing, about all sorts of different things. And then I made a video called the, again, I'll be careful, a video called the coming Gattaca this yeah. year about how we're, we're heading towards some sort of two tier society. And they hit that thing in an hour and then they start going through my back catalog and like they like they like a person sat down at a desk you know no automated stuff and started going through and i got 11 guideline strikes in 72 hours guideline strikes it was uh, staggering didn't know you could get more than one in a row oh yeah 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 you can you can i mean i was it was like a like a watching a henchman get machine gunned in a movie they're like blah, 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 blah. and i was going you, you have no, there's no point even watching him you know he's going down so let's go cut to another scene right and that's what I felt is like, well, that's over. That channels the channel's history. I mean, you, you if you get three guidelines, forget about copyright strikes, right? Copyright strikes, you can work with the people to to maybe yeah. get them knocked off. And I got lucky. I, I dodged, you know. But once you get three, it's a judgment call. They can just poof, wipe the channel out. And yeah. for whatever reason, uh, just very recently, like only a few weeks ago, um, my admin uh, friend, he came back. He goes, "You're never going to believe this. The, the channel's back up, or the channel's free and clear. You can you can post new things." I'm going, "How's that even possible?" And <laughs> in fact, not only that, here's here's where it gets weirder. So after the third strike, apparently, because the system can only handle three strikes. Remember, after three strikes, you know you're on this, you know, death row. Mm -hmm. after three strikes every strike that came in apparently was meaningless because there was no column to put it in i got a strike yeah. back in september 21st i got another guideline strike there's nowhere to put it did you have to put an appeal for all of those or no i i did no such thing okay. i appealed nothing well what's the point seriously i mean because it was all it's all because it, of it is pointless to appeal because every time i've gotten a strike i appealed and they just didn't even look at it i swear that they don't analyze anything if you appeal nope. Nope, the, it's the it's an automated response. It, it's time delay, where you send it, and I between roughly between two and eight hours later, or whatever, they'll send you a thing back saying, "Oh, we reviewed your blah blah blah." Unfortunately, we aren't a bull. Well, that's a bunch of crap. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I I put out a video. In fact, the last one that they just put a, did a strike on. I I swear, like the only reason they struck it is because I was mocking them on on the video. And what it was is me <laughs> ranting about like, oh, I'm gonna get a strike on this video <laughs> or whatever. And yeah, they, there's they have. And they call it hate speech. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Why? I mean, I'm not a hateful guy. I'm actually very loving on all my videos. <laughs> oh, I'm a hateful guy. I hate all sorts of people. Yeah. I, I I especially hate the um the Eskimos, as you know. The uh, for various reasons, their their unsafe architecture, their uh, the the whaling. Um, their sense of fashion. It's it's all horrible. It's all terrible, terrible. Unbelievable. Anyway, the point was is that it would not surprise me. I once I was on the radar, a bunch of other people were on the radar, people that were reproducing my videos were on the radar. And I felt terrible, but at the same time, it's like, look, you know, the rules have changed. Now you can't talk about certain there's three things, like for example, real quick, that you can't talk about anymore on YouTube. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, false flags, can't talk about them. That's the thing that triggered my. Story. Oh yeah, yeah. You cannot, you cannot talk about false flags. Um, um, you can't talk about the election. <laughs> yeah. In any way, you cannot criticize the the twenty twenty election in any way, and medical misinformation. You can't. Oh, yeah. You can't talk about. That's the only strikes I've ever gotten were me uh, medical misinformation. I did one where I, I was talking about our former president. But it wasn't even uh, promoting him. It was actually mocking Christians in, in some way where I was like saying, OK, you were calling you were saying that he's going to get a second term uh, because that's what the Lord told you. <laughs> the Lord told me, you know, uh, and yeah. I, you know, yeah. and I actually was calling it out. I, I was kind of making a mockery of it. And uh, and and it had nothing to do with promoting our former president. I don't even like to say the name because I got a strike for it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what I, I, I did a, um, I think it's one of the videos that wasn't taken down called, um, I scream, you scream, red team, blue team, which is the, um, well, actually the video was officially called, um, for all the marbles, which yeah. is look, the, the media is blue. 
right? And we all know that, you know, with the exception of just, you know, let's just call it blue. Well, that's a, that's a problem. I mean, if the media is almost entirely blue, then you can do pretty much whatever you want. And now, and if, once you start tightening the screws, you can, uh, you know, yes, there's all sorts of smaller venues, but the big players out there, you know, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Google, and they now have their unified front. It's mm -hmm. tough. It's really, really tough. I mean, I have friends that, you know, their channels are, are gone and they've tried to do backup channels. It's a constant battle. I just, I don't know. My, my irony is I hope I hit 100,000 subs because you get a little plaque. And I hope, they, <laughs> I hope they send it to me as the channel's Thank burning you down. for supporting our movement, YouTube. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've gotten more. I've got, a, I've got a special copyright folder in my email box, which I, I keep with every copyright Those thing I've ever had. right there. Yeah. <laughs> you, that, yeah from, all, the, all the strikes you get. I, I've gotten a strike. I, I haven't gotten a ton of strikes for different things. I got a strike for just about every category you get a strike in over the yeah. last six years, including a thumbnail. I got a copyright strike for using an image in a thumbnail wasn't even in the video oh, that's weird that's where weird. uh this kid from uh oh sacramento Nor northern california where he took a picture of the city and he said he sent it, it he sent to the newspaper the newspaper used it and it was up there there was no things on it no copyright things on it. took it not that i would care anyway and he he like threw a strike now eventually you know i i appealed it and youtube cited in my favor but it's like it's amazing what people will uh will uh do anyway sorry anyway go ahead. That they would even side with you to be honest with you i i just have never seen it I, i've in all the time that i've had my channel i probably had like uh five strikes but i've had uh, uh warnings on several occasions I've, I've oh had, like, hell man three. that well you when you get the problem is if you get three strikes what they do is they they lock the channel and you have to resolve one of them within two weeks or something like that. Yeah. And if you can't resolve one of them, you know, you, you basically have to, at that point, you've got to contact whoever's throwing the strikes and you've got to have one of those people back off. And if they don't, the channel is gone. And uh, so, I, I've never gotten any uh, copyright. I mean, I've had copyright claims before. I've never gotten. Oh no, no. Copyright claims. That's <clears throat> I get, I get those three, three times a week. <laughs> I, I, I almost never put up stuff that, that doesn't have a copyright claim, with the exception of interviews. Yeah. Interviews, for the most part, no. But uh, because I use copyright music and the, the yeah. music people, they, they want their nickels. And I get it. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, I can't even monetize anymore. I I, uh, I lost my original email that this was attached to. And uh, I somehow, anyways, that's beside the point. So uh, they, they probably owed me like, like I don't know, 100 bucks or something. Probably. I, I, I was I was finally demonetized uh, permanently uh, this year. Oh, really? Yeah. And only because I was talking about the the medical misinformation stuff. Yeah, somebody was saying you're a shill. So I don't know. You, Obviously. You, money, you probably shouldn't show your face anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've, no, the, the shill thing's been there forever. And I don't really, <laughs> I mean, I don't really care. You know who the guy that, that came up with that was Eric DeBay. Probably, yeah. Where, um, well, no, I it's not even probably. I, yeah, I, yeah. I can tell you, I, I saved the emails from Matt, which was he was in the documentary, which was Matt when when it was only just a few of us that were doing this back in 2015. Matt wrote me and said, "Yeah, Eric, Eric does well. Eric's people also are writing me saying we he doesn't like what your your stance. It's like, and so they said you have to go along with Eric. You have to be aligned with Eric's perspectives." Or they, or we will discredit you. And it's like, okay, I don't even know who you are. No offense. But it's like, what the hell? It's like, and and Matt was siding with Eric. It's like, whatever. Look, I'm going to do my own thing, which I tend to do anyway. And the problem was is that Eric, they were true to their word, which was it's like, okay, we'll just we'll try to discredit you. And so they immediately started calling me, um, you know, shill, government agent, that sort of thing. Yeah. And. Where a lot of people missed this in the documentary, which was Eric. Eric got a hold of, um, if you remember, ODD TV. Yeah, Matt. Matt uh, for some... <clears throat> yeah, he yeah. he convinced Matt that that Patricia and I were were both working for the government, 
And so ODD came out and said, yeah, anyone that bought tickets for that first conference, don't go. And so remember, this is non-refundable tickets. Yeah. And we it was a it was absolutely sold out, and yet there were a hundred and something seats that were empty. I mean, they burned the money rather than show up at this thing. It's like really, really. Yeah. So and that and it's never gone away. It has never gone away. Well, anyways, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to necessarily rabbit trail on that because I, I don't I don't buy into the, all that because a lot of people they'll just you know uh, claim shill on anybody that they disagree with. Sure. So, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't really care if anybody disagrees with me. I like to hash out the the details on certain issues, right? So yeah. that's that's why I call this contemplating the cosmos because we're we're all approaching this from a different angle, uh, you know, what, whatever that angle may be. Right. Uh, anybody, if you're willing to admit that you don't have 100 percent of the truth, let's just try to figure it out together. <laughs> you know, sure. And, uh, uh, that that's kind of my uh, my shtick on on this whole thing, and I'm trying to figure out. Because honestly, and can, let me just brief you a little bit on a little bit of background with my, uh, you know, rabbit trails that I've taken through my journey. You know, uh, you can actually say that the majority of the time I've spent was with uh, near-death experiences. Hmm. As, um, I, I'm very fascinated that there's so many corroborating type stories of people having out-of-body experiences, you know, uh, experiencing something like they can recollect that was happening to them outside of their body and they were completely dead. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, uh, not just that, but there's a lot of people saying the same things about the patterns of how they die, how they see a, a dark realm or how they see the light or how they see a tunnel or how they see a, a life review. You know, there's all these different right. things uh, that you can literally, you have a template for, for near, near death experiences. So, um, now, the, the thing that kind of got me after a while when I was looking into this mm -hmm. is that you could have five near-death experiences that have the same exact template, but they have different deities. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, the thing that bugs me about that is, you know, I, I look to one of the, my favorite ones, which was uh, this guy that was an atheist or whatever that saw Jesus in the form of light. And right. uh, I thought that was really exciting when I first heard about it. He was very emotional about it, said it was the most real thing he ever seen in his whole existence. And sure. uh, he carried with that with him after he came back to life, right? So, uh, but then I've met and I've interviewed a lot of near-death experiencers now. And uh, now, granted, I think I lean more toward the Christian perspective in a lot of ways, because I started realizing that everybody interprets things the way they want sometimes. So, uh, you know, if somebody sees that template that the next person sees, maybe they say that that's Krishna or maybe they say that's Jesus, just depending on their perspective. Now, anyways, so that that's kind of where I was like, OK, you know, and a lot of and I started and I filtered a lot of that through the, the view of like, the you know, this I, I started thinking a lot. Why do so many people see this when they're floating up into the air? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and uh, I started talking to a lot of people that were just like, you know, don't don't go toward the light, <laughs> you know, because uh, it's all a deception. They're, they're trying to reel us into some sort of, uh, you know, reincarnation loop that we're in prison. You know, you know, have you ever heard stuff like this? I don't know. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I remember I, if I'm I'm I start with flat earth. So I yeah, there's nothing new under the sun. Hit me. Yeah. So. Uh, I remember asking Dave Weiss on uh, uh, Flat Earth Podcast. I did one of those little, uh, you know, call-in things where they, I forget what it's called. But mm -hmm. um, anyways, I asked them what, what they thought about near-death experiences and what people saw, you know, the globe coming up. Uh, and, you know, they responded with, well, there's people that have seen the Flat Earth too. <laughs> so it's and true. I was like, you know what? I guess that's true because a lot of people, you know, and again, uh, I, I start wondering if everything's uh, – I'm really kind of getting into a rabbit hole here. But sure. uh, I guess the bottom line is uh, a lot of people would actually say we are experiencing this reality through an extension of God, so to speak. So, And, and a lot of people interpret that from near-death experiences too is like we are all intelligence that are sourced from the same thing. Um, and it's not necessarily – you know, you know, our interpretation of something from this 
vantage point is is moot because it doesn't matter uh how we interpret it it's just really you know there's there's only one source i guess right. ultimately um so uh it, the thing that doesn't really make sense to me is that there's everybody goes back to or comes here to experience something for the sake of uh this quote unquote god or whatever mm-hmm. and um and i'm not trying to say that I, I don't believe in Jesus or whatever now, but I've ventured down the roads of trying to understand why there are different perspectives. And philosophy really has penetrated my, my reality. And uh, that's why I didn't really stay with the globe or, or the flat earth discussion for, uh, I don't know, a few years. I, I kind of broke away mm-hmm. uh, after about 2016, maybe 17. Sure. I just kind of felt like, meh. I mean, I'm kind of tired of the same old like arguing and, you know, it's just a lot of the arguments are just getting old and people are just slandering each other, just bashing. And I don't want to be in that discussion. So I just decided to go down the roads of like near death experience. And one of one of my videos uh, hit like a quarter million views. And that's probably one of uh, my well, that's my most popular video. Nice. Um, and uh, have you ever heard of contemplating the cosmos? I don't know if you've seen any. Well, I, it, it's possible, but I, I look it's, at so it, much it's stuff. new. I mean, I've interviewed a a, a bunch of people. You know, um, oh, cool. I'm kind of like the the Patricia Steer, a uh, guy version of Patricia Steer. I, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm nothing like her. But I, I do like to uh, interview uh, flat earthers. I like to interview um, near death experiencers. I like to. I, I mean, uh, the other hot potatoes, so to speak. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, uh, I actually wanted to interview Patricia at one point, but eh, I'm just kind of a, a small fry. So. She's she's tough to get a hold of nowadays, believe it or not. In fact, she was supposed to attend the the big conferences that happen, still happening right now, down in uh, South Carolina, and I know that she she backed out. She wasn't speaking; she was just going to attend. Hmm. So, uh, okay, so. Okay, I'm going to segue into this thought process. Okay, so because uh, I did want to talk to you about flat Earth. Sure. And, um, so, so I have a an employee uh, that I was talking to. I, I try to talk to him about like the flat Earth and stuff. And he, to this day, he, he's just like in that kick of like the alien of invasion and stuff, and how right. aliens are probably controlling everything. And I'm not arguing against that in any way. Um, in some ways, I'm almost thinking they there are some beings that are manifesting in our physical realm controlling things or whatever sure. um but uh but he was saying that uh, that documentary you he's like the flat earthers proved themselves wrong <laughs> you know how they you know they made it sound like you know at the end when jaron's like oh i didn't get it <laughs> or whatever and then uh you know and then uh, the, uh, the power of editing and we can go into that if you want uh, of sure course. I mean, I, I've, I've talked about it on several occasions yeah um but obviously in uh globe busters guy what's his name bob bob yeah bob he uh had that um what ring what ring that? laser gyroscope yes 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 uh so so that was the other one like where we proved ourselves wrong kind mm, of thing yeah and uh so that's where my my coworker was like, "Yeah, see," and uh, he actually knows who you are, so I think he'll be very impressed that. Uh, oh boy! On here, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> what's that? What's his name? First name? Kevin. Kevin. That yeah. funny. Give, give that Kevin re- a, a message from Mark Sargent. That is really funny. Well, no, that's that's funny because I did for the conference because I wasn't going to be there. They so do a quick pre-record thing of you saying hi to everybody, and I made a fake ISIS video. Where I was doing a, um, I was dressed in a whole balaclava thing with a with a terrorist background, you know, an ISIS background, and um, and I, I, it was a whole, I screwed up, you know, because I was calling it ISIS X, and my producer in the earpiece, you could hear him say, no, 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 it's ISIS K. Now it's like you, you weren't at the meeting, we we changed it, blah blah blah, and uh, I get, I said, who the hell proposed this, right? He goes, uh, Kevin. <laughs> and I go, wait a minute. K stands for Kevin. <laughs> and so, hey, so you yeah, thank you, Kevin, for um, being the the reason why it's called ISIS K. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I I don't want to, uh, you know, 
I don't really care about his perspective necessarily. I just like the discussions because we talk, you know, we talk uh, Bigfoot and we talk uh, aliens and stuff. And so, like, I, I'll agree with him about the alien thing. Right. But I, I won't call him ETs. I won't call him ETs because I don't necessarily believe that something it, there might be something external that I don't actually feel like. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've we've gotten more sophisticated over the years. But yeah, 40, 50 years ago, it was like, oh, they have to be from Mars and Venus and Jupiter and, and yeah. things like that. Not not anymore. They don't. Now it's like, in fact, why would you think they're from Mars and Venus and Jupiter? We've never seen any lights or anything come coming off those those worlds, if you believe they're worlds at all. And, and our perspective was like, mm -hmm. I will tell you the same thing I told everybody else, which is uh, before I got into flat earth, I remember living out in Colorado, beautiful, clean, high altitude air. And somebody told me, get some night vision binoculars, start watching the sky. And I did. And the sky is freaking crawling with things, absolutely crawling with them. But do oh, I think- satellites. Sorry. What? They're satellites. Oh, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> satellites that slow down and speed yeah, up and go speed ballistic. Up and, and, and turn directions. And, yeah, and turn directions. It's amazing. Yeah. No, when you see them for yourself with night vision, you're just going, what the hell am I looking at? But do I think all these things flying around are from other places? They don't have to be. I just, you probably heard me say it. I think they're older versions of us. I think they are previous civilizations that just happen to be probably stuck here and different things and they've got access to unified field engines and so they basically got the jetsons cars that we never got and uh, the future that was robbed from us they got and so they get to go and do all these sorts of fun things and transportation to freaking do you think that they're, yeah. they're responsible for like the monolithic structures and and things like that or oh sure i mean come on the the old civilizations even ancient aliens as compromised as they are got some things right which is mm -hmm. we're not the first people here Right, the the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road, Puma Punku. It goes on and on and mm -hmm. on and on and on. We have no idea how they got things done. I mean, we, if you, I actually had the pleasure of going to the real pyramids, and I heard it's like, look, if you stand, if you know anything about engineering, you stand at the base of the pyramids, you look at them, and you say. And, and then you look at Cairo behind you. Because Cairo, you, the pictures look like the, the, the pyramids are in the middle of the desert. They are not. Mm -hmm. They are literally within a golf shot of Cairo. Yeah. You know, Cairo is back. You see look. it from like a hotel. This, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the hotels are right next to them. Well, yeah. obviously, because they want, they want to be really, really close to them. Yeah. And when you turn around and look at Cairo and the state that city's in, and you look at these things, you're going, yeah, these guys had nothing to do with the building of this place. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> At all. Human beings had nothing to do with the building of the pyramids. Why? Because the pharaohs just came out, oh, we built it in 30 years. There isn't a single piece of written or papyrus or it's burned. There's nothing. There's no records of how it was done. The pharaohs would have said, oh, well, look at this amazing engineering achievement. Here's how we did it. Nope. Nothing. Yeah. They just found them. They just found them and took credit for them. That, and that's brilliant. That's what you would do, which is you find these things like yeah, we're going to just tell people we built these and we're going to be gods. <laughs> and they were. They, that's all it is. It's like people, you know, every generation, it's like, well, we can't compare ourselves to them. Look what they built. You know, you know, the the elongated skulls, right? Uh, yes. Like Peru and stuff. I, I've heard people say that, you know, the long uh, hats that the pharaohs had actually were the elongated uh, so, well, oh, I can't remember his name. <laughs> There's one particular pharaoh who is apparently really, really weird looking. Um, yeah. And he the one was, that looks like Obama. <laughs> even, yeah, even more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but he was really, really weird looking, very different. And he was the one that changed everything. And when he died, people were freaked out by him. Apparently, they were scared to death of this guy. Because yeah. he was just super creepy. I mean, is that as alien as you can remember? This was back in a time when alien wasn't even a concept. And as soon as he died, they changed everything back to to the old rules and the old ways, and they tried to get rid of him, you know the memory of him as much as possible. And I mm -hmm. can't remember his name, but it's good stuff. You should look it up if you get a chance. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm fascinated by all that because I, I feel like that's a huge part of the reality that we just don't understand, and and. I think that a lot of it's uh, largely ignored by mainstream uh, well, just because 
main, mainstream are the scribes. They're they're the bards of the, of the of the authority, the elite. And that is yeah. look, history. The 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 quote, yeah, history is written by the winners, but that's not the the better quote is history is just lies that are agreed upon. Which is whoever's in power, they want to spin it a certain way. I mean, hell, look at America. Five years ago, we were considering removing slavery and the atomic weapon program from the history books entirely. The basically in specifically the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, there are two demographics that really don't want those pieces of history removed. One would be black Americans and the other would be Japanese Americans. They're like, yeah, yeah like the hell you're going to move, remove those things. It, it, because America, the, the point is, is that America want, always wanted to be the white hats. They always wanted to be the good guys. That's, that's the image. We're larger than life. USA, go team, rah, rah. But we've done a, come on, we've, beaten the crap out of a lot of countries to get this far we are a country built on colonization plain and simple but when you're doing that once you've won the war you have to spin it so to make it you know the you got to give a uh, your your people a reason to cheer you can't do the whole with yeah. the, the opposite of, of like germ well, no not even nazi germany um the roman empire the roman empire it was clear cut you came home as a military force. People are like, who'd you conquer this year? <laughs> and it's like, I'll tell you, we brought all the spoils of war. Hooray. That's great. Yeah. We're just going to keep conquering. And the public wanted it because that's what they expected. Yeah. And we were not. We're going the other way, which is like you know, we've achieved all these things and forget all the bad stuff we did. Often I reflect on the fact that I don't know how anybody back in the 30s and 40s could have let somebody like Hitler rise into power. Now, granted, a lot of people might argue that that whole history was was fudged to cause us to believe that Germany was the bad guy. But, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you mean uh, when you say how anyone, like how the Germans could? So allow how it? people allowed the government system to rise up. So uh, like the Nazi party, right? So, uh, Patriot patriotism, plain and oh, simple. That's that's kind of what I see it today. I, I'm seeing how people are allowing that kind of system to rise up now. So it's like, I guess it makes sense now. <laughs> but back back then, it was there. It was this groundswell that turned into they maximized it to where you didn't dare. Of course, there were dissenters. Mm -hmm. You didn't dare go against it because the, these guys were frothing at the mouth. I mean, you saw the rallies. The rallies were insane. There's never been a rally, you know, system like that, even today, where everyone was just, you know, it's like, you know, they, they were, it's like they were on this precipice and they were just like waiting for someone to cut the chain. And the second they did, it's like, take Europe. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's take Europe. <laughs> and, and if there would have been, I mean, for the love of God, um, which is why I don't know if you saw the, the sci fi show, um, The Man in the High Castle, I think it was. No. Where it was, well, you ought to watch it if you get a chance, which is an alternate history. I'm surprised they made it, to be perfectly honest, to where, where Germany won the war and what happened. And basically, Germany and Japan kind of shared the United States, which wouldn't have happened. Like Japan got the West Coast and, and Germany got the rest. But that's that's where they that's where they were headed i mean there's there's been all sorts of different books over the years that said that in different timelines germany won the war in many of those instances in fact the come on the only reason they didn't win is because uh pearl harbor was bombed that was it because the the whole point a lot of people don't know which is Germany, their whole plan was to take the United States without firing a shot. Remember, there was a whole bunch of German citizens already over here. Miss Minnesota, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, Warner Von Braun's one of the well-known ones, right? Oh, yeah. But there's, I mean, well, my family is from, I, I know a whole bunch of German people. In fact, there were German people that were called back. In fact, they made note of it in uh, Band of Brothers, where they were called, they made, did full pay or newspaper ads um, in all American newspapers saying, look, we need you to come over to Germany because, <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to start this war soon. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, if Pearl Harbor isn't attacked, then the, the United, the, because Jap Japan member was temporarily allied with, with Germany, then the United States doesn't get involved. The whole point was they were going to take everything 
the United States was the big gem. That's the piece of stake they wanted. And they were just going to come in and say, oh, we're going to fly dual flags. And then eventually they were going to fly one flag. And, and that was it. It was it was never. And the people. I'm sorry, I go, no one to go off on a tangent here. But there's a rule which is men in power rarely relinquish it. And you've got an entire mm -hmm. government system over here in the United States. Are like they saw this coming, and they're like, "Yeah, we're all going to be out of a job here." <laughs> I mean, all of us, <laughs> every single one of us. They are going to take you. Know, they're basically just going to leave the buildings. <laughs> You know, the Lincoln Memorial, they're going to leave all of Washington, D.C., the building's intact, and they're just going to roll in here and, and, and kick everybody out. And that's why the, the conspiracy was, was Pearl Harbor allowed to be attacked? You know, and then the question is, well, <clears throat> it's too big a question, which is, you know, do the ends justify the means? If it isn't attacked, we're speaking German right now. Yeah. Plain and simple. That That is all. You know, people don't realize how dire it was. Europe was gone. Russia was burning. I feel like, you know, the, the narrative that they present is that Russia, they didn't defeat Russia. The winter, the winter defeated Germany there. Well, <laughs> they didn't fortify well, so they spread thin in certain areas. Right. Well, Russia had always been afraid of Germany, kind of like Japan. China had always been afraid of Japan. For you know, there are certain. We'll use a sports analogy. There are certain teams that don't do well against other teams. You see them in the stats. It's like, why the hell do these? You know, this football team always lose to this football team, even though it makes no sense, right? They always seem to lose, especially at home. Japan keep beat the crap out of China on a regular basis for whatever reason. And Germany always hammered Russia. So when this thing started, Russia was getting clobbered. And they threw, I give all the credit to Russia, they threw everything they had at them. I mean, just men. There were, you know, the stories of where they would send two men in pairs because they ran out of rifles. The first man didn't have a, or the, the man behind didn't have a rifle because once the first guy got shot, they grabbed his rifle and kept going. You know, that's, yeah. that's how, and they lost 20, they lost 22 million people in, yeah, you know, in that war. That's a huge amount, that's ridiculous huge amount. Number. And, but yeah, the winter, that, that, the poor planning and the America, Germany knew they were in trouble once America was involved. They, they knew that, that and the, the, not to get off on a history thing, but <laughs> they rolled the dice. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the movie Patton, uh, sounds familiar. Uh, with George C. Scott as General Patton, right? You know, yeah. the, one of the big American generals uh, who was just a, a, a loose cannon. He was so respected by the Germans. The Germans basically said, wherever Patton's going to be for D-Day, that's where we're focusing all our forces. And so Patton was this big diversion. And they're saying, oh, no, Patton's going to be here, way away from Normandy, way away from the, you know, and so the Germans like, all right, we're going to, we have to roll the dice. We're going to think that the, he's going to lead the D-Day. And he wasn't. And that was it. And D-Day rolled in through France and uh, the Germans fought, but they, uh, most of their forces were out of position. Yeah. Um, anyway, had they yeah. been in position, who knows? Because if, if D-Day would have been stopped, oh, I, I don't even know. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like in some ways, and again, uh, a lot of what I do, I try to avoid conjecture or, or assumptions in any way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, because, like, I often think, like, okay, yeah, what if uh, the Nazis, you know, prevailed? Or, uh, or what, if, what if this is just a resurgence that's repackaged, uh, you know, the way that it is now? You know, uh, maybe, maybe it was never about the Nazis. Maybe they are all in cahoots, kind of like the whole you know, Antarctic treaty type of thing, you know, um, at, at the highest levels. Yes, there are, there are things that the, one, the first rule of power has never, ever changed, which is stay yeah. hidden. The, the curse of being the puppet masters is you can't be on the stage simultaneously. In fact, Napoleon, I'm pretty sure he was the one that quoted this and he said, never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown, which is the public can't come get you if they don't know who you are. The pitchforks and torch crowd, they can't find you if they don't know your name. Mm -hmm. And so you've got, you know, people say, oh, you know, the president of the United States is the most powerful man in the free world. It's like, no, no, he's not. But it's a great illusion that we put forward. I mean, the fact that you would say that 
you know, this one man had somebody stand behind him with a briefcase with a big shiny red button, and all he had to do was open it up and hit the button, and the nukes would fly. Come on, come on! It's, it's great yeah. movie material, but no one actually, what? Be- no one should believe that because that's not how it would work at the highest levels. Every it is a completely structured system that that they're constantly working on, and they, you know they they do some sinister things to get things done and uh, but anyway it's a whole other topic for another time yeah i i can't imagine that you know joe biden has anything to do with god no <laughs> but no but i mean i mean did not the guy before him going all the way i mean there, there's a running joke like that 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 reagan would wake up out of out of a sleepwalk and just hit the button and you know you wouldn't that doesn't happen when when you get into the military situation it's a it's a series of people but then there are levels of power above that you know yeah, the, that, that's obvious i mean you, i can't so sleepy joe biden or or uh, mumbling joe biden they always say like all these different things like right. I, I don't think that he has the capacity to um you know control the amount of control that he has i guess he, uh, he's, he's barely the only reason he, uh, I have a friend of mine who, in the mil- ex-military, who's told me several times, like, he's like, he, Biden should have been gone by summer. But then we started looking at who is, his, you know, his vice president. And yeah. she's got that nervous tick. And it's really disconcerting, you know, that the fact that she, you know, when she's asked a tough question, she starts, you know, laughing, you know, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. It's like, yeah holy smokes that's something you see out of television sitcoms right you know yeah. like it's it's a poker giveaway i mean a, you don't even go to the poker table if you get something like that and because of that they're like yeah we can't act, we she she will be worse than him just kind of glazing over let's just shoot him with a whole bunch of vitamins talk for f- 20 minutes and get him off stage as fast as possible you, you know how they uh say that they like to give away what they're going to be doing uh, yeah. kind of thing like they they yeah. have to give us a, like a pre a precursor like you know yeah. event 201 or something right you know, uh, and, and i often think like you know like bible prophecy now i don't know how much of that you've ever investigated but everybody's talking about it nowadays uh, so, well, then they should in fact <laughs> i did a, i did a rant specifically where i read uh and i won't go into the details where i read specifically all the good parts of revelation 13 and 14 yep uh, the mark of the beast and all that mm-hmm. yeah yep 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 <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, I was thinking like, okay, obviously the B system is rising up, yep. and, and the Mark system is is ramping up, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, and you know, I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm almost gonna say that the the G word that they put into the the you know, I don't right. know if you know what I'm talking about. The, yeah. the there's like some sort of control mechanism inside of it, and and. Uh, so again, I don't know. It's all speculation at this point. I have no idea. Right. But um, the thing that bothers me is that we can't even have this discussion without being at risk of, of being taken down. Well, now, I'm just ta- talking about the hypotheticals because I don't know. I'm what, not going to say I, I anything about this. There was something, you know, Rob and I actually talked about this um, early in the spring before he started really committing to the whole seed thing. And, mm-hmm. and he agreed with me in that it's like, yeah, if it certainly has all the earmarks of it, meaning right now, me, right? There's a lot of things I can't do right now. I meaning there's a lot of things I can't buy and there's a lot. And I, there's things I can't sell right now. And because I haven't done, uh, yeah, I haven't done a certain thing and it, it's just like, okay, if this isn't that, Oh, you know, because there's a lot of people, you know, basically the, the debate was with Rob and I, there wasn't much of a debate, was the, and I don't want to go into it too much, which was the whole pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, which yeah. is there are huge amounts of Christians in the pews that are saying, well, this can't be that because the rapture hasn't happened yet. Yeah, and I'm I'm not in that. Can't. Yeah, it's like it's like well, so wait a minute. So if it sounds like a duck <laughs> and, it, and it acts like a duck, this isn't that duck because that duck comes later, you know, in the story after yeah. you're gone. That's your entire basis for this. And yeah. and and it's like no, 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 no. That was it was all it, as as a kid. I grew up um, evangelical Christian, and 
I I was one of those people that I was one of those irritating guys that during Sunday school I would be constantly thinking it's like okay I'm trying to work out the logic here and my thing was okay so what if the rapture doesn't happen in the timeline when you think it's going to happen do you have a backup plan well no we don't need a backup plan because that's when it's going to happen it's like yeah but what if it doesn't <laughs> right and it's it's like and so now we're at that point where it's like okay and, and most of the, most of the people that i um uh, interact with uh, uh, as far as christians are concerned uh don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture um and yeah but there's a lot to do i mean um, there's a lot to do but usually those are the people that are just raised into it and they don't really have any reason or fundamental foundation for why uh it's it's even and a lot of it goes back to interpretation too. I mean, because uh, you, you could actually say, "Oh, well, there's a first. Uh, you know, the, it comes back for the bride first, and then the second coming is a different thing." <laughs> well, I, and, I uh, always cons- I always considered it just clever old school marketing, which is you want to your your religions tend to attract more people if it's more positive. And what's more positive than saying, "Yeah, all that really really bad stuff." You know, in the in those later things in Revelation, yeah, you don't have to worry about that because <laughs> you're going to be gone by that. And that was the that was let's face it, that's the hook, which is oh yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Let's sing songs, everybody, and that's what they did. And and so nobody, I mean, I have talked to so many people along those lines, like you know, because I would Revelation was one of the big things for me, right? And I, you know, I analyzed a lot of different stuff in there and. When I talk to people, it's like, oh yeah, I didn't have, I don't even want to look at that. People don't like looking at negative like things. Them. Yeah, you're right. It, it's uncomfortable, and so I get it. I, I totally get it. But when you know we we reach this stage, it's like, look, the the world around you right now is not what it was two years ago. Yeah, there's some water, and, and I know it's the boiling frog thing. You know, you're turning up the heat slowly, and people are like, yeah, I know there's gaps in the supermarkets, and I know those those shops are closed, and I know all this, and I know all that, but it's not that bad. It's like, yeah, you wouldn't have said that back in uh, January of 2020. You, nobody would have believed you if you no said one would have believed you. Yeah. Uh, if, I mean, if, if, if you would have said that people would have stayed home because we sent, you know, we paid them so much ridiculous. That should have been, by the way, that should have been the, the big giveaway. I'm a big believer in plot points. And that is if you know, you, you I know, you know, the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, if you're giving people way above and beyond unemployment benefits, way above, I mean, you're giving them bonuses. Who the hell? When, when did we ever yeah. do that? How much more incentive can you give somebody to not go back to work? Right. <laughs> when has that ever happened ever to where there are so many people I have talked to that said, oh, yeah, why would I go back to work? I'm actually going to be l- making like money, $10 yeah. an hour less <laughs> by going back to work. I'm just going to sit here. And by the way, the, what was it? The average, and we know this because the average American over the last two years has gained 30 pounds, <laughs> right? Yeah. Just from staying home, you know, staying home, watching Netflix and eating Malamars or Nutter Butters, whatever. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm going to say right now, Mark, you have a kind of a demeanor about you that is is mostly positive about the way that everything <laughs> Uh and I've always gotten that from kind of your talks that I've seen. Uh, and for me, I'm not like, I'm not doom and gloom in any way whatsoever. I'm just, I am addressing reality the way I see it. Um, and, you know, so like when I was saying that, you know, the book of Revelation might be that precursor that was like warning us about what the plan was, so to right. speak. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. saying that, you know, the powers that be actually wrote the Bible to control us, like a lot of people say. But I, I often wonder. I always reserve the, you know, the. I I don't I don't know if it's that. I mean, if their plans go that far back, because people in power tend yeah. to fight over things, unless there's some sort of magic ring involved. But there's a lot of things that are shifting at the top. It, the, one of the great things, you know, um, about power is that it, I, you know, be, aside from staying hidden is that it creates this weird ethereal list, which is if you ask any conspiracy person what their top 20 groups were in order of importance of who runs the world, 
uh, no one would ever get anything done because no one knows, right, exactly who it is. I mean, just rattling off the, the names itself, like the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the, the Vatican, the, the Masons, Rockefeller the, Foundation. the Rockefeller, the Bilderbergs. It goes on at the, the Illuminati. All, all just, the trigger words to get this video taken down. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, no. You can you can mention those words. Oh, I think. Okay. Um, but but I just call them the authority, which is now how far back do they go? I mean, a lot of people say, well, you know, the Rothschilds, you know, they're they're the most important. I'm going, look, the Rothschilds are actually fairly new in the game compared, you know, they they made most of their giant fortune. Wasn't it around Napoleon's time that there was yeah, the War of eighteen twelve. Yeah. I mean that they won they made their their big move during the Battle of Waterloo. And that's yeah, yeah it's a couple hundred years ago, but it isn't. 600 years ago it's not the old old families yeah there was like rosicrucians and the uh, oh yeah and, yeah and i mean the, if, uh, if you want Catholic, you are the, the, uh, yeah if you want the oldest oldest you should you know look at the remnants of the of the holy roman you know the empire you know the roman empire didn't get completely snuffed out <laughs> you know there's a there's a concentration of power over there they've got their own little city country and yeah. you know they've stored up a lot of information but I have no idea where I was. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to comment on your thing where I try to stay positive, but don't don't get me wrong, right? My demeanor. <laughs> I'm I'm if I'm not laughing, I'm probably crying. <laughs> there's a lot of I I go to there are certain websites I go to um you know doom and gloom websites just I, forums like one of them's uh, Godlike Productions, and I go there and I just refresh it and I, no it's been up for decades right. And they're always looking for, you know, it's always, it's all, there's always some red flashing light going off and there. It's like, Oh, watch out for this and watch out for that. And I'm looking yeah. and, and most of the time they, you know, well, 99% of the time they're wrong. You know, it's like, it's, it didn't happen. But in this, these last couple of years, they've been, you know, they even caught them know. off guard. It was like, what, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> we did. I didn't know what's going on. I'm still waiting for something big. I've been calling for an event since April of last year. So, which is so the the FF, the false. Oh no 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 not even. Well yeah, it would be that, but it would be something along the lines of like Project Blue Beam, something yeah, huge, like an Some, invasion or something. Yeah, yeah, something freaking huge. I, I, you know, roll the dice. It kind of reminds me of. Um, uh, you ever see the movie uh, uh, Cabin in the Woods? The, oh, the, that that, that's familiar. The staged horror movie by Joss Whedon, where the the five kids go in this cabin, but it's completely manipulated. It's completely artificial. And they have to choose something. Oh, if you haven't seen it, you gotta you gotta see Is it. A horror movie, or yeah, it's a horror movie. Um, but I forget if I've seen it or not. Yeah, Cabin in the there. Woods, and the, the whole concept was is the government was picked five kids to go into the quint, you know, the the cliche cabin in the woods, right? And then the kids go into the basement and they pick an artifact. Right, mm -hmm. and whatever artifact they pick, that's what monster is going to haunt them for the rest of the show. But it's got to be voluntarily, right? And anyway, the, because the you know the government does this on such a regular basis, they're they're in their big lab at the at the thing, and there's all these people, and there's a big chart, and they're like placing bets, you know, informally, and over over what it's what it's going to be, and that's that's kind of how I look at it. It's like it could be anything. It could be the invade. It could be an invasion. It could be a Chinese thing. It could be a staged UFO thing, which would be really cool. I'm rooting for that. It could be a zombie apocalypse. It could be, oh, you know. it could be all the above. I mean, in some ways I feel like the zombie apocalypse is imminent because of the mind control thing. You know, I feel like, you know, anybody that hasn't been injected, so to speak, yeah, uh, may not be, uh, controllable in that sense if yeah if you if you go down that road the only reason i'm hesitant about that yeah. is because i remember i'm old enough to remember the whole smart meter thing from oh, 10 years ago where smart meters they were going to bolt on the side that's what was going to take people down and they didn't so yeah. when I, I i've been here and i won't mention the names but i've been hearing about the technology linked to the other things you know that are in you mm -hmm. and that they can just turn it on with a switch if you were gonna do it I, I, let's put it this way if you were gonna go down that road that would be intriguing because that's all blue team 
Here's, here's by the way, let, let's talk in code here for a second. Mm-hmm. Here's one of the stats that really put, put it in perspective for me. 92% of blue team registered voters mm-hmm. got it. Yeah, I, I actually heard this stat. It was like 50% of the, the red team. And 50% of red team. And most of them were senior citizens only because they were told, you know, they're like, oh, those, yeah, you're exactly. doctors. Because the senior citizens, red team, they're listening to their doctors. Plain and simple, because all they care about is staying alive to spend their money. Mm-hmm. And that's 50%. So if you all of a sudden turned on, well, you wouldn't worry about the red team people because they're older, you know, those people. But if you turned on the blue team, what the hell is going to happen? Come on. I mean, riot season last year, the <laughs> blue team is terrible at a lot of things. And yeah. one of the things they're really terrible at is fighting. The right fights. <laughs> blue team does not the only thing they learned from a hundred days in portland was how to use umbrellas and bike helmets that's it <laughs> and the occasional firework oh yeah so you so you're uh, are you in bremerton i'm trying to remember uh, no but north of bremerton um uh port angeles no no wait, wait well that's that's not, not that's north. that way that's the um i'm north by everett oh okay okay i used to live in seattle in magnolia so I, I'm kind really? of really, yeah. I I lived I lived in Magnolia for a year. My uh, my um family uh, grew up there. Bike was the road the road I was on. If you know where that is, I it overlooked it overlooked uh, the big train tracks oh, in yeah. between uh, uh, Queen Anne Hill. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And it, it, I got I have a straight shot of uh, Mount Rainier from our yeah from our uh, window. Yeah, right on. But yeah, my yeah, uh, I, my I could, my yeah. My mom grew up there. Um, my uncle grew up there. In fact, my mom went to um, Queen Anne High School. Yeah, so I was only there for like a year, but uh, I, I, I just think about like all the shenanigans that took place, uh, like you know when they built that little that little. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the zone city within a city over there. Oh, that <laughs> and that was an interesting experiment to let that happen because. You know full well it was infiltrated, and you could watch and see. Again, that was all left, you know, all blue yeah. team, and it didn't go well. <laughs> I mean, they they couldn't hold it. It was it was hanging on by a thread, and and, and it degraded into anarchy fairly quickly, to yeah. where you know people died. So no, it was in it. now Portland. That was interesting. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if some of the Portland cops actually just enjoyed it after a while because he was like, all right. Let's get out there because there was there was no threat. It's not like your European protests or really really angry you know union protests. These were just freaking kids that were screwing around with you know you know waving off tear gas canisters. It was ridiculous. There's absolutely. I mean, every law enforcement per, per, and military guy I talked to said the same thing. It's like what? All of you, a few live rounds. That protest is over permanently. And they, they didn't, they was like, the kids didn't realize this. They thought it was just, you know, they were, it was, they, they were playing games. That's all it was. It's like, you have no idea. You're working with, you know, you're up against guys that at any given point <laughs> could make it very real. And you're coming back day after day and raging, whatever, bunch of crap. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of follow that, but honestly, I'm, I know, I'm right up the road. I mean, I'm in Boise, Idaho, but yeah. um, I, I, I mean, our area is like, like total red, red state. For the oh most- yeah, well, I was, I was just there. I oh, was really? in, uh, I was in Coeur d'Alene uh, two weeks oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. So I mean, and that's really the reason we're hugely red. Uh, I mean, my city particularly is is kind of trending blue because of the just the hub of of our area. It, right. You know, the bigger cities always end up being bigger blue. cities are blue. Yeah. So, um, but. For the majority of the state, like across the state, is red, uh, just because we have a lot more territory, farmers and right. hunters and all that. But right. uh, and honestly, I like Idaho for that, and I, I don't. I try not to be political anymore. I, I actually, I only like pl- politics for the sake of viewing lens of yeah. understanding things. Well, and, you uh, yeah. you understand a lot about people through politics. That's for sure. I, well, I'm no, I'm I'm not a registered voter. I've never been a registered voter. Uh, I don't think I can technically be a registered voter for a whole another thing, um, but but I get it. But yeah, remember most of the population is you know one or the other. Uh, but but you learn a lot about the. In fact, I have never 
seen it so polarized, never seen it so biased as what we've seen over the last couple of years. So, which yeah. is why I made, which is why I made um, the video called "From the Marbles." Both both teams, red team and blue team, they're out. It's winner take all. Which is, you yeah. know, they they blue team wants the red team removed from the map, and red team would like to see blue team, you know, under the boot heel. And they, yeah. it's it's not. There's no friendly discourse anymore. It's you know, everyone's out for for you know permanence. And personally, I feel like it's kind of a Hegelian dialectic. They're just uh, creating a division or, or creating a problem. And then we're going to all try, have to... Uh, I mean, I, I think that uh, with uh, the division that's taking place, and in a lot of ways, uh, this was predicted, like the sheep and the goats are going to be separated in, in the end. And, uh, and I think that that's what's happening. Sheep's... Uh, well, anyways, for, forget it, forget that rabbit trail. But... Uh, I, I just so I'm aware that you know with all the censorship, it kind of stemmed from from like this discussion in my right. opinion. and uh, now we can't even ha have a doctor. In fact, uh, one of the doctors that's local here is yeah. becoming very well known. Uh, he's been on the high wire with with Del Big Tree. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, they they do a lot of discussing of, about the you know the injection and stuff and. Uh, and how they're they're trying to control everything now. Uh, so this this doctor, I want to interview on my channel because he he in, endorses uh, you know the horse pill, so to speak. Ah oh, yes, yeah, you know? the animal treatment. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and you know, I mean, it's crazy to me that I can't have a doctor, you know, give you know his side of the story. Because it's so tabbed. That's, I mean, that's, I, not, that's not the narrative. The The narrative is right now, which is, uh, it's, it's something, and again, I'm, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it, but I, I was joking back in the day when I said it, which is, it's like if you were asking for volunteers for the end of the world, right? No one would volunteer. <laughs> they would if you left out that part. Hey, would you like to volunteer for something really beneficial and safe for you? Is it really? Yeah, because we said so. Yeah, would you volunteer for it? And and a whole bunch of people did. Yeah, you can believe us. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay, you know what? That that leads me in a whole other thing. We probably should talk about flat Earth. We're gonna we're gonna yeah, do that. Yeah, this, but, is, but, this is already destroyed. That, that's right. So, but I, I want to mention this real fast, which is the it, this ties into flat Earth, and we can segue into it, and. That is, is that people, it's funny, people have their own comfort zones, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that this world is filled with layers and layers and layers and layers of deception. That's all it is, right? There's tons, people lie about everything all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's politics, duh, <laughs> business, yeah. sports, entertainment, and yeah, even science and journalism all mm -hmm. day long. I could spend, I could spend a day on every, each one of those easily, yep. just, just talking about those. But the wheelhouse that most people are in, everyone's got this weird imaginary line, which is everything inside this box, I believe in. That's my comfort zone. And everything outside of it, that's scary and weird. And I don't want to lose sleep. So I'm not going to think about that. And it's weird. They create this, this artificial bubble. And, the, and that's where, you know, and if the media can reach inside that, for some reason, they buy it. You know, they, it's, it's this weird, you know, they, all you do is reach it right inside and, and kind of wave at them. And the people are like, oh yeah, that seems legit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No matter how weird it is. No. And, and again, I have, I have learned some things in the last couple of years. One is there is a group, at least half the population, at least half that absolutely whatever is on the news is absolutely objectively, you know, put it in a frame. True. Yep. And they will not question it. They will. They will not question it. And I get it. Conformity builds empires. I totally get that. But we, we segue into the flat Earth thing, which is like. But what I try to tell you is like, there's an old saying: trust everyone, but count your change, because if you don't, and they notice it, they are gonna stiff you every single time. People, the the the, the last line would be. The line, it, I love it because it wasn't Heath Ledger that came out. It was from the, the Joker from the Batman movie where he goes, P 
people are only good as the system allows them to be, which is, it's true. People will try to get away with everything they can, you know, at, at any given point. I, I worked in the time of attendance, timekeeping software. People will lie, cheat, and steal if they know they can get away with it without punishment. Yeah. And so when people say, people come back to me, it's like, well, okay, they'll lie about the moon landing and they'll lie about, you know, JFK and they'll lie about all these other conspiracies, but they won't lie about the shape of the earth. Cause that's, that's just too big. That's yeah. like, no, 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 no. You just think it's too big. And more often than not, they're just going to say, well, I don't know why they would need to lie about that. that that's it, just, well, yeah, because they can't, they the can't, point? <laughs> they can't think big enough. And just about everybody I've talked to over the last six years about this, they, that's one of the big things they throw at me, which yeah. is, okay, why would you lie? Why would you lie about the shape of the earth? In fact, I'll, I'll name drop. Um, Piers Morgan loved it you know he he threw that at me and i called him on and i go so oh yeah you that's right you did it yeah i did where he had an ass one of our astronauts sitting right next to him at terry burt's and and i go i go really you'd break that story really <laughs> you, you because your knee-jerk reaction is well the people have a right to know i go okay but this <laughs> is so huge this would be so big that this is beyond your ability to release it meaning you, you you would want to release it and then all of a sudden, wait a minute, could this have potential ramifications? So anyway, everybody says, okay, because it's one of the big, the, the, the hottest questions, which is why would you do it? Why not tell people the, the true shape of the earth? It's like, well, no, you could have done it a long time ago. You can't do it now. Um, kind of like if you, uh, I'll give you an, uh, a comparison. Uh, you hear the stories about guys, you know, weird engineers that all of a sudden some come up with an engine yeah. that 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 creates a unified field or runs on water and stuff like that, yeah. right? And and uh, and all of a sudden they disappear and the engine never sees the light of day. Yeah, why? This is the kind of work I was interested in before the the FE. You know what I mean? Oh I, yeah, I remember like uh, perpetual motion, like motors, uh, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, free energy machines and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, you can, they're great ideas. Fantastic, would benefit society. The problem is, is when a civilization reaches a certain point where all their industry is based off the old tech, mm -hmm. the old tech is what you have to use because you can't, it's gotten so big and so broad, you can't just change over. If you try to change over, everything else collapses and you lose, I mean, you could potentially lose the whole ball of wax. You could lose all of civilization. So like, for example, um, people said, you know, well, why if, if they, you know, the unified field engine, you know, the, the, the engine that supposedly powers UFOs, you know, the Jetsons cars, you know, basically the, the whole simulated gravity thing where you can alter physics and, and you can move a, basically an object around as fast as you want. It's like, well, why don't we release that? It's like, oh, you mean release a Jetsons car now, now you'd release that now. Okay, here's what happens. The automobile industry collapses. The boat industry collapses. Aircraft <laughs> industry collapses. Um, and all those jobs and all the subcontract jobs and everything tied to those industries collapse and the whole thing just goes <laughs> like a souffle. It's yeah. just gone. And you want to do that. That that and no, no, there are industries out there. It's like, which is why if someone ever came out of the petroleum industry, they are out on the hunt. They have gobs and gobs and gobs of liquid cash. They send people out all the time. They even hear a whisper about somebody making an engine that doesn't use gasoline. Yeah. They are on them and they come to them and they say, Okay, here's the deal. We're gonna okay, show you two briefcases here. This briefcase over here is basically an unlimited bank account for you. And this briefcase over here has a nine millimeter with a silencer in it. Which one are you going to pick? <laughs> and it's and it, because you offer you offer the carrot and the stick at the same time. That way, you know, it's it's very good leverage. You hit them hit them both sides. So if you if I come to you, segue into the flat Earth thing. If you don't figure out that the world is flat, and you can't because you don't have the tech, you don't have the aircraft. Remember aircraft good aircraft has only been around since the 1950s right yeah so if you don't figure it out to almost 1960 and then you figure it out what do you do do you tell the people and people in power the the one of their one of the top five rules is don't take the don't take the risk 
don't take the chance. You don't leave anything to chance, which is if there's a 5% chance that the people will lose their minds and run through the streets with pitchforks and torches, like going after Frankenstein, but you, you don't do it. So if all of a sudden, you know, you, if you told people, it's like, okay, again, Illuminati meeting, ready? Really quick. Everyone's dark room. Everybody's smoking. You can barely see it. And, you know, people are talking in gravelly voices like Batman. And he says, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And one of the guys says, well, let's see. Uh, all universities, uh, astronomy and astrophysics would be gone forever. Um, then geology, archaeology, biology, anything with neurology, those things would be have to be retooled. And libraries would have to be emptied out. And that's every university in every country. So I don't know, tens of thousands of institutions would be just in chaos. Economically, world markets would have to close for months. And uh, religiously, all the churches would come after science with swords. <laughs> yeah. because, and and it's like, and that's that's just the openers. Those I, just, are the big I, I look at all this stuff like a lot of people, there are whistleblowers that come forward all the time. And they just yeah, the but this is I'm not saying whistleblowers for that, but there are whistleblowers for just things in general. That, for, uh, people they kind of have a small following, but usually they're just, you know, equated to be like some, you know, psychotic well, case for, or for small things. Yes. You can whistleblow yeah. on small things. The big things, they don't leave to chance. There was a wonderful movie out there um, from the seventies called three days of the condor. Brilliant movie about CIA on CIA crime. Robert Redford was working for a think tank. The think tank accidentally discovered some code <laughs> that was in books that was basically saying the United States was weird in the 70s was going to take the Middle East entirely, right? And oh, that's weird. I know, right? And so the CIA, I know, weird, right? <laughs> what are the that's odds? Uh, that's the right yeah, and so the the this branch of the CIA just wipes out the whole think tank, but one of the guys, Redford's out getting sandwiches, and he's smart enough, you know, because he reads books all day, but he figures out a way to dodge and bob and weave. And at the end of the show, this gets in your whistleblower part. The end of the show, he's telling his his boss on the street, and they meet in a public place, so they you know, he can't grab him. He goes, "Doesn't matter. I already gave it to him, right?" And the New York Times building is right behind him. He goes, "What did you do?" He goes, "He goes. They've got it. They know." And he goes, and "His boss goes, yeah, but how do you know they'll run it?" And uh, and he goes, "They'll run it." He goes, "How do you know?" And basically what he was saying was, we've got people, you know, you know, in in every media thing, mm -hmm. which is the, you know, emails are monitored, phone calls are monitored. The old school tricks have never, ever changed. And there are things at the highest level, they watch certain people to make sure secrets don't get leaked ever, 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 ever. Um, sorry, one more real fast, which is, I'll give you a great example. Um, uh, later in the 70s, there was a movie called Capricorn One. Brilliant yeah. movie about the fake Mars program. The, yeah. the thing that OJ Simpson in that, yeah, OJ Simpson is an astronaut who gets hunted <laughs> down and killed. Brilliant. Uh, Charles Bronson, uh, the father of uh, Thanos. Um, I saw him in real life. He, he drove a Lamborghini past our car when nice. we were driving on the freeway, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it was it was a cool show, but the the part that haunted me in that movie was something I've never seen in any other movie, and it was a fairly light movie considering the topic, right? Which was when that the the software engineer that worked for NASA when he was talking to the reporter at the bar, and he's just they're just having a conversation, having drinks, playing pool, and he says, just I mean, he he says in just one sentence, he says, he goes, well. It's just crazy. He goes, the communication, the broadcast couldn't have come from 70 miles away, right? And within 30 seconds, there's a phone call at the bar, and there was no cell phones back then, for the reporter. It's a fake phone call. It's a distraction. That's all it is. Reporter goes up to the bar. He goes, what? Sorry, I can't hear you. Hangs up the phone, turns around. His friend's gone, right? The drink's still on the table. His friend's gone. You heard nothing. <laughs> you saw nothing. It was completely off camera. And then the scarier part was, when the reporter goes to check on his friend a couple days later at his apartment, there's another lady living there. The compartment has completely changed. And even the magazines on the coffee table have the right name and address of the woman who's living there. It's like his friend was erased. Like he was never existed at all. He called up NASA. That guy never worked here. 
And that's the type of things, again, the things that most people aren't comfortable with, which is, look, secret yeah. can be kept and people are monitored. Basically, what, they, what I was saying was that particular engineer, once they knew he was going off reservation for a little bit, they had people on him. They had people in the bar. They had probably people with microphones. And the second, the second that they, they saw him committing to a certain way, I was like, nope, he is gone. And that is, you know, not just gone. The, the line from that from that movie back in the eighties, um, they 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 locked him in a room and threw away the room, right? So sorry. You know, uh, and again, I, I feel like a lot of that could be like conjecture, or speculation, or whatever. But uh, I can't help but think that 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 was the fate of uh, Gus Grissom. You know, you know. Well, the- I mean, you can. I, all right, all right. You can you can say you know it might be conjecture, but yeah, Gus Gus Grissom, he was the guy. All right, hey, great example of that. He was supposed to be the first astronaut on the moon. He was the right stuff. You watched him in the movie. You know that he was he was the lead guy. He was the alpha male among alpha males. Right. He was the guy, a true American hero. The problem was is that when they were doing the psychological profile on him, they also realized, oh crap. He's not going to go along with it. He's just not. In fact, yeah. he was criticizing the program early. It didn't make any sense to him. The plot holes, he could already see him. He's like, this is just, you know, and he was public about it. He was, he was not shy about being the camera. He was tell, told people the way, you know, the way it was. He was like a Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager mm-hmm. probably would have done the same thing if he would have been in the space program. And so, you know, did he die in that capsule? Maybe. <laughs> or he might have been removed somehow. Yeah, actually. maybe, or maybe they just said he died in the capsule. And but yeah, I mean, and he was and he was pulled from the program. And then Neil Armstrong and and uh, John Glenn and all those guys they they continue with the program. In some ways, if that if that's a real story, like it, like the, if our uh, conjecture is true, uh, he, he's kind of a hero of mine. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Again, <laughs> I don't think of it as conjecture because again, remember the qualified did when we started this thing, which was it's and i know again you probably don't think along those lines because you know you try not to lose sleep i've lost a lot of sleep which is would you have done the same thing if you are in the position of power and you have people that you can't trust for whatever reason what do you do you know if you if you can't reason them maybe you did sit down with gus you know maybe you did sit down it was like hey man Come on. Well, remember from Capricorn one, the conversation. Okay. Here's the part that wasn't realistic about Capricorn one, right? These guys were air force officers, career military guys, right? All of them. And, and they were taught, you know, and there's, they put them in this room in this air force base and they're talking like they're completely blue team, you know, they're like, well, you know, they're questioning their values and morals. And I know they were doing it for the plot and I know the writers were blue team, but that's not how it would have gone down. You know, the conversation would have been, would have been uh, no we're doing it for god and country and we're going to do this and c- come on once and even even after they threatened their family and again i know it was for the plot device you had to keep the you know, the plot thing going well even though when they threatened their their family it's like no we're gonna make a break for it anyway you know <laughs> it's like even though your family might just straight up die because you ran and at the end that happy ending where the astronauts running and the cameras are there i oh, no, no 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 that's not how it have ended <laughs> oh I'm sorry. It ended with that shot, but the the follow up would have been, all right. You're grabbing the camera crew. You're grabbing the camera people. There was a terrorist event here. Everybody died. <laughs> you, you would have you would have done anything to kept that story flattened. Mm-hmm. Sorry. What else? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I just think that um, you know I think that the plot that they have going on now. Yeah. is the biggest plot of all and um yes you know uh obviously this this whole 2014 15 uh time frame when when you know the the fe kind of took root and uh and really shifted the direction of a lot of people like us right. in the sense that uh we're willing to venture down the rabbit hole no matter how painful it, it is going down that you know path uh and you know, I'm just, I always try to promote, just go down where the evidence leads. And, um, but then the, there's that, that variable of like, everybody interprets things the way they want to. Um, but I mean, I, I'm constantly looking at the, the mainstream proofs, you know, like, um, uh, I'm trying to remember, you know, when, when, uh, 
it was it John Glenn or so, somebody, whoever went up the uh, and and did the you know the podium the, speech? No, no, no. Um, the one where they were up and, and there was like some sort of stop motion uh, animation. Oh, uh, oh, where he turned his helmet. The, yeah, the, it was like the, uh, yeah, the know, straight up the here. straight up stop motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I talked to my brother about that uh, once. I was like, take a look at this video and tell me if that isn't stop motion uh, animation. <laughs> yeah. And he, he was like kind of floored. He's like, you know, I can't argue against that. And the even to this day, he doesn't believe uh, my perspective. And uh, but he, yeah, you know, I, I was like, I know you probably think I'm a moron. He's like, actually, no, I don't think you're a moron. I think a lot of what you're saying has some validity to it, but I just can't bring myself to bring, bring and it's the, the same argument with everybody. I can't bring to myself to believe this because it's too big of too big. a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Because, and that's the whole qualifier, which is it's too, it's too big. Therefore I can't believe in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, which, which drove me nuts. I've had people even try to, to shrink it down. They say, okay, fine. The Apollo missions were, were terribly, terribly done, but that doesn't mean the ISS is fake. Going, what? Going. I go, look, it's, it's, that's one of the first rules of crime. If you shoot one person, you got to shoot everybody because the punishment's the same. You're not going to fake the moon mission and then say the ISS is real. I know. I go, so you were saying the Jetsons technology, right? Right. <laughs> some, some sort of, uh, yeah. craft that the Jetsons created, but way back in the day, right? Right. Yeah. Flying saucer technology, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to that. And, uh, real quick, I never got a chance to tell you, but my, the company that I was working for uh, prior to April of this year, yeah. uh, I'm now running my own business, uh, um, but I had been doing that uh, up until April. Uh, or it, up until April, uh, it was just a side business, but I worked for a company uh, doing manufacturing for, uh, you know, control boards or, you know, the brains of like big equipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we actually did uh, uh, like balloon satellites. <laughs> We did uh, a lot of uh, just satellites in general, a lot of sa satellite technology. Right. Uh, and, you know, I know satellites exist, but I also know that we worked on balloon satellites, which is funny because I remember when nobody would ever, uh, in, like when I was telling people before we ever started doing balloon satellites, I was like, I've I've been seeing a lot of balloon satellites, and they're like, no way, <laughs> you know. And then, no, it's I mean, it's not even a secret. It's it's not it's not even classified material. I mean, we've been doing balloon satellites before there were rockets. I mean, come on, it does. <laughs> why would anyone? And I've I've challenged people. I go, and you can watch videos on this. If you can launch a payload with a balloon of four tons, for pennies. I mean, fractions of a penny on the dollar compared to a rocket. Why would you ever put a big payload on a rocket ever? I mean, you yeah. know, with, with the balloon technology, which we pretty much perfected now, you can keep those things up there for a long, 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 long time. And they move really slow and you can do a lot of stuff with them. And again, you know, and, and if you want, if you're sneaky, you can charge people and say, oh, yeah, it's going to cost you X hundred million dollars to put this on the rocket. You don't use the rocket or you set up a fake rocket. Oh. Or use the same rocket, just use the footage. <laughs> so it's like, oh, here's the rocket your thing went on. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, again, the people, you know, David Weiss was the one of the first people to say, like, look, NASA's the biggest consumer and producer now of helium in the world. What why would that be? Why why would NASA be the biggest producer of helium in the world? It's like it doesn't it's because they're using it in in, in shuttles. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting. But, by the way, the shuttle thing, <laughs> real quick, uh, on a side note, you know, the astronaut that we went and visited, you one of the Challenger guys, and you know, we went to his house in the snow. Oh, you did that? Oh, yeah, 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 there's a video on my channel. I'm really surprised it didn't get taken down. And what was interesting to me, because you know, there's certain facial things, one of Hollywood's things that they never got right was they can't, you know, you've seen it with all mainstream actors. You have a young actor, you can't really make them look older without it looking like, you know, it's like, oh, I just put some makeup on, you know, so, you know, it doesn't look the same. When you age naturally, you have a certain look to you, which they just cannot fake. Yeah. And there are certain facial things when you look at the Challenger people that it's absolutely that person 30 or 40 years later, right? Anyway, they're interviewing him in his driveway. Oh, I've, I've seen the video, but I thought that you said you were there. 
no, 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 no. I wasn't there. No, one of our guys was. But, yeah. I mean, you know, found him. It's like, oh, yeah. What got me, you know what got me was the, what he didn't say. It wasn't what he said. It was he didn't say. And one of the first things you do if you're accused of being someone or something, first thing you would do is you would have an alibi. You'd have an alibi for 1986. You'd say, oh, no, I remember when that happened. I was in such and such in 1986, right? I remember. Nope. Nope, he didn't say any of that. That's the first thing you would do because everyone, everyone knows without like, nope, I wasn't there. Every cop show, I was here during such and such, right? Doing whatever he was. In fact, you know, and in fact, he couldn't even help himself at one point. It's like, well, yeah, who, you know, whoever I heard about him must have been a heck of a guy. It's like, oh, you cocky bastard. You know, he was, <laughs> he was basically doing everything oh, yeah. he could <clears throat> not to say it, but I'm sure. <clears throat> that even they thought back in the day which was re witness relocation well who cares there was no internet back in 1986 not even close ah oh, so great yeah i i mean that got me early on too i i couldn't believe i mean I, it was hard for me to deny that uh you know a lot of those even had the same names and uh, yeah same names um, they're they're all about the same age, you know, the same age, the same. One of them, I think, died of natural causes. Two were supposedly twins. Yeah. Of each other. It's like, all right, all right, twins. I get it. Uh, and you say, well, we've got we've got the Kelly brothers. Those are twins. I'm like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but we weren't known for twins back in the day. Plus, <clears throat> I've got that photograph sitting on my machine. What got me later was um, you know, they were posing with these micro the, these motorcycle helmets. Right. They were motorcycle helmets and I'm going, they weren't pressurized helmets at all. I'm going, I'm going, oh, well, you know, those are display helmets, obviously for the photos, you know, you want to switch it out with something else. And then I watched some of the videos from the eighties and you, it's no, that's the actual helmets. They were wearing just motorcycle helmets and you can see their necks, like they're like they bare necks, short sleeve shirts, no gloves, nothing. And I'm going, oh, right. It was the eighties. And, and, you know, we just didn't care back then. We didn't pay attention to any of that, you know, cause there was only three channels early on and, and there was, you know, no one recorded anything, you know, and even if you did, why would you record? Oh, it was just ridiculous. Amazing yeah. what they got away with. Amazing. Yeah. I, I was just re reminded that you were the guy that uh, had the standing offer to put you in a, a space suit in, in the, yep. Yep. In, in the, the room. Put me in a vacuum chamber. Put me in a <laughs> yeah. Put me in a vacuum uh, chamber. Pull you haven't gotten the offer yet. No, yeah, you'd think you'd want to off me by by doing that and say, "Oh, yeah, you, you have one of those swivel helmet ones that have like the ball bearings <laughs> inside." Of that well, you know, that was that was the other thing that I put out there in a later clue, which was I go with all the astronaut stuff we've done for the last 50, 60 years. There should be tons and tons and tons and tons of hours of astronauts in freaking vacuum chambers, and there's not. There's not. In fact, you go on YouTube and type in, you know, man in vacuum chair, you know, space suit in vacuum chamber. You come with James May from Top Gear from Britain going with a G-Force suit into a tiny little Air Force chamber. Why is he the number one search? And why are there every, and all the astronauts are training in swimming pools? It's like, yeah, but that's the opposite. That's pressure going in. It's the last thing you would ever try. It's like, well, no, for that floaty feeling, which leads me to something else, which is are you on the moon. Oh. <laughs> on the moon, remember, it's supposedly one-sixth Earth gravity, right? It means 180-pound man weighs 30 pounds. So why are you moving slower? If anything, you'd be moving really fast because everything about you is moving fast. Everything about you is light. I mean, you weigh freaking nothing. You could be, you know, you're ding, 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 ding. It's like, no, ding, ding, ding. It's like really slow motion. I'm going, nope, nope. Nope. Feats of strength. Nope. We, we always, I mean, you got to remember 108. If you weigh 30 pounds and these guys were in shape, the vertical jump would be amazing. Amazing. Six, six times what normally you could pick up the, the moon rubber, right? Everything would be just a, a freaking cakewalk, but no, all you have to do is again, show, slow down the frame rate by 50%. Oh, look at that. And I'm oh, sorry. One more thing, which is real quick, which is the part that bugged me wasn't the United States people. It was the part, people overseas that I ran into. Yeah. I said, look, I get it. All the Americans, like the, the lady from Fox News said, I believe in the moon mission because I'm a patriot. It's like, okay. So basically she's saying, whatever the government tells you, you better believe in. It. It's like, okay, she was a press secretary at one point for Bush, but who cares? <laughs> Which is, I asked the people overseas, I said, 
okay, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? They all said the exact same thing. You know what they said? Because the news said it. Yeah, because it was on television. Yeah. It's like, that's it? It was on American television, therefore it must be true? <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> that ain't it. And, and, but it's, but I mean, again, that's what we told people. And come on. I mean, I was, I was doing an Egypt trip before this. And I remember there's all these school kids coming up to me, right? This, this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about, of the power of media. And the, all these cool school kids were coming up to me and I'm going, what the, why are these kids swarming me? I said, well, you're the first American we've seen, they've seen outside of television. I'm going, and so what? <laughs> and, and they go, well, you know, American television, you know, all, all those shows is this wonderful, those, the wonderful way Americans live. I go, what shows are you watching exactly over here in, you know, Egypt? Right. And they, so, you know, the American dream, Dallas dynasty, Falcon's crest, you know, all these shows about amazing millionaires that just have drama in their lives, but they all live on, you know, massive acreage and, you know, they, money isn't even an issue. And it's like, that's all they show over there. You get it? You get it? We've portrayed in that one little instance, we've portrayed stuff in, in certain Middle Eastern countries, countries that America is larger than life. They yeah. still, I mean, and their aspiration for as many of them over there is, is what? What do you think? It's to come over here. I go, well, come over where? They go to the new world. I go, we even, we haven't called it that for <laughs> about a hundred and something years. The new world. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so, anyway. so I guess everybody still wants to come over here. They do. Um, they do. They still think America is the, the, the land of opportunity. And, and I, yeah. I mean, to some degree it is, but. Uh, but it's uh, not what it was. No, it's, it's, it's fleeting. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I'm afraid to be a business owner nowadays. Oh yeah. I mean, well, in the uh, yeah, well, in the last two years, yeah, it's everything's everything. I mean, I fell back on this, and honestly, I've made pretty good money. Like this summer, I actually made really good money, but good. Uh, compared to what I was making, uh, and uh, in fact, I just branched out in a, a new area of my business that is kind of a risk, but in a lot of ways, uh, I'm already noticing that it's probably going to be pretty fruitful, um, and. You know, it's it's weird because, and again, I look at a lot of things on a spiritual level because I feel like there, you know, this is just one facet of our reality. I mean, there's something, there's a lot more going on. I think, uh, and and it, like before, you know, we even started, I said that, you know, I, I'm probably I, I always say I'm seventy thirty in favor of the flat uh, realm or whatever. And yeah. I, I know you probably hear a lot of people say, uh, you know. My my biggest reason for not uh, go, going the full the full hundred right. is because I don't want to sound arrogant because I feel like there's too many things to account for to um, you know put all your eggs in one bas basket. And I hear you. I hear so, you. So so really, it's just the hesitance that I have for certain it, things. You would be, and again, I don't blame you. Most of the people I have talked to in, in this sort of format have said the same thing. I mean, hell. Um, I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, Alex Jones, uh, back in 2016, producers call, contacted me and said, okay, how long can we do a Flat Earth show without actually saying the words Flat Earth? <laughs> so I go, uh, 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 maybe 10 minutes, maybe. And that's if I dance around a little bit. And they go, yeah, sorry, we, we, can't, we can't take the chance of the, of the backlash. I have run, it was the reason why 90%. I I have there's so very few hosts that I have talked to that have have you know said said something different than what you're saying. You know, in fact I've heard in so many different ways like, "Well, I'm not a flat earther, but I want to hear what he has to say." Or, "I'm not a flat earther. I believe it's round." I loved when they use that. Uh but but I think it's an interesting topic and we we should discuss it. Um but it, but most of them, I have, I cannot count the times that how many people have said, I'm scared to death of doing this podcast because I'm afraid of the backlash. I'm afraid of what might happen because I don't want to come off as some freaking kook. Uh, 90%, 90% at least of our membership are still in the closet. Yeah. That includes captains of industry, celebrities, uh, everybody. You know, I'm, I've got family members that are on board 
they're like, oh yeah, absolutely love what you're doing. Oh yeah, we're not coming out. But <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah, I'll just tell you, I'm happy to discuss it with anybody. I love bringing it up to people that are non-believers. I actually, uh, I, I advocate for it because I feel like it needs to, that discussion needs to be had. Now, well, uh, you know, for for me, my the any like, uh, you know, that thirty percent that I was telling you about. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of reserve to like say maybe it's the matrix or some well, sort of presentation. That that's that's a wonderful segue, which yeah. I, I, I have to throw this in there because I yeah. I know we're, we don't have that much time left, yeah. which is I only start with flat Earth because the general population. Remember, I go to the lowest common denominator, which is people understand the term flat Earth. It's an easy concept; they've heard it for a long, long time, but. I follow that with a caveat, which is say, look, if it's flat and it's closed and it's enclosed, it's probably virtual. Mm -hmm. That is, it's like, why the hell wouldn't it be virtual? Um, the Matrix was, which is what, 22 years old now? Um, and then the 13th floor and stuff like that. People yeah. didn't get it. You know, they, they, they watch the movie. It's like, oh, it's really cool special effects. They didn't, they still didn't understand the concept. And that is, look, we're getting to the state now in our computer technology where we're discovering things that seem to mimic what is happening around us now. Um, yeah. The, the double slit experiment, one of the biggest. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, that's kind of a something where you can identify to maybe there being a loophole within the, the technology, so to speak. Uh, and now I, I would say that maybe it's some sort of, not necessarily computer uh, graphics, but more so like, um, like some sort of vibrational frequency, uh, you know, separation. Because if you ever seen those, uh, you know, um, like the the salt on the flat uh, surface, the with, acoustics, uh, with the, the acoustics uh, yeah. vibrating underneath, yep, and uh, and it changes position just based on the frequency. Right. And I kind of wonder if there's some sort of frequency um, separation uh, between realms. You might oh say. hell, why, like, why not? Just like channels, a... right? Yeah, yeah, very, very similar. There was, um, in fact, there was a, a movie with George Clooney that touched on that very thing, and I can't remember the title of it, Save My Life, where, but I'll give you an example real fast, and that is for people to get it, which is right now, there's music all around you, right mm -hmm. now, in the air, right now, but you can't hear it because you don't have a receiver. Oh, if you had a little transistor radio, you could hear it all day long. Same thing with television. There are television channels broadcasting to you all over the place surrounding you all the time but you can't see them because you don't have the receiver for it um so what's the difference you know who's to say that what you are living in right now is not that yeah uh, i mean i made it i started making a series uh, based on that uh like there's uh i i have a three-part series where it's not three part it actually i just kind of stalled out i just didn't make any more parts uh but i've done three parts uh, pattern and it's called patterns of reality yeah. and uh basically uh the first part was about frequency and vibration and yeah. it kind of went on the whole uh nikola tesla concept uh and how there's a lot of you, you can extract electricity from the air and things like that oh, yeah. and, uh, i mean there's all kinds of different things uh that you can look at and and i started looking at you know um and that was that video that i had a quarter million views uh where um, it's called uh, Frequency of Light and Patterns of Reality. And uh, the title of the video is actually Proof uh, the, uh, the, so the Soul Transcends the Body and God in the Afterlife or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and so basically, uh, there's some sort of intelligence that transcends the physical na our physical nature. And... Uh, and I, I'm just fascinated by that topic for some reason. I, yeah. I think that there's something bigger uh, than our, our, you know, this, what we perceive here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, if, again, other things to look at, two things real quick. Um, if you, you may have seen, heard of one of them called 21 grams, which is, uh, you know, the, the Germans, always the freaking Germans. We're measuring, you know, we're measuring things when people died, and they noticed that when the body died, oh yeah, I've heard instant, instantly lost twenty one grams worth of weight, which is a little weird. And and there's a scientist like, oh no, it's because of this and that, and it's like, I don't know, well, that seems pretty weird, and it doesn't happen with animals; it only happens with people. It's like, okay, um, 
but the other thing, if you want to look up some weird stuff, uh, there, there's been different shows on it, and then they don't know what to deal with because science hates the topic, even though they're the ones that found it. It was called um, um, pre. Oh, what was it called? Ah, something, something in free will, neuroscience and free will, which is, are we, are we actually, do we actually have free will? So what they did was they hooked a helmet, you know, electrodes up to somebody's head, like that's what you do, and hook it up to a computer, and you start hitting numbers on your computer and you say okay pick a number between one and nine and note the time that you picked it right yeah and they were measuring brain waves and so it's like i'll say pick a number between nine and all of a sudden you say you think four right and you say and of course people are most of the time hitting it instantly you know right after they they think about it what was interesting was is that the computer could tell not the number they were going to pick we're not that good but could tell mm -hmm. when you were going to pick the number eight seconds before you picked it that's a little weird because that pre that's before your actual thought of picking the number. So Meaning, that, that kind of goes into the mindset that the brain is really just the antenna somehow exactly. that receives whatever, you know, instruction and, and, from whatever transcends it. And, <laughs> and science uh, hates it because it screams predestination, which goes into, and let's one of those things we'll, we'll end on here, get close to ending yeah. on, which is, it's not that you're, you may not just be living in a virtual reality, wherever you want to call it a frequency reality. It may not just be that. You may be living in a virtual movie. Think about yeah. this for a second, which well, is you make the choices beforehand, before you come in, and then all you have, because it's way more efficient, and then all you do is you block the memory that you made the choice beforehand. It's sort of like, I'll give you a, a quick example. You are the director of a film, right? And you make the movie, you make all the choices, Orson Welles style. You pick the actors, you pick the music, you pick the, you know, the sets, you pick everything. And then just before the, the premiere, you bump your head on a door and you have temporary amnesia, right? And it's like, well, I'll go to the premiere anyway. So you go to the movie, right? Everyone else, they're just watching a movie. But for you, it's the greatest movie ever because you agree with absolutely everything that's on screen. It's like, that's, those are the perfect actors. That's the perfect music. It's like this movie was made for me, you know, and, and it's the most mind blowing thing ever, but you don't remember that you made the movie. It's it. And it's way more efficient. Um, there are people nowadays and the kids it drives me nuts that they don't even, they're so lazy. They don't play video games. They watch other people playing video games right? Recordings. But think about that for a second. Because when you're watching someone else play a video game, the, the suspension of disbelief is you forget that they're not playing it live. You're watching a recording. Well, that recording is this tiny little MP4 file, right? Mm -hmm. It's way more efficient. It, it's nothing. There's nothing real time about it, but your mind can't break out of that. You're watching it and you're like, oh yeah, you're getting all the, the fun and games out of it, but it's not, but it's just a fraction of it's just this little this little cube of information. And so, anyway, there's so many cool aspects, but what else? Yeah, we, we could we could continue to talk about all the different angles. And honestly, I'm I'm happy and excited that I had an opportunity to talk with you. And uh, you know, uh I I am I'm, I'm part of this community, whether I, I like to say I'm hundred percent or not. I, I'm I am part of this community. And I'm not afraid to admit that I'm hundred percent flat earther. I actually say I'm a flat earther oftentimes, um, but I will not say that I'm a globe earther because I think it's all. Oh, beautiful. good. Well, at least, <laughs> well, yeah, don't do that. Oh, which yeah. again, that's one of our mantras anyway, as you yeah. know, which is, it's like, which is regardless how much you agree with the community on different things, everyone at the end of the day agrees with exact, which is why the community has grown and grown and grown and grown, which is everyone agrees on exactly one point, which is, yeah, nobody believes in the globe anymore. Yeah, they, they, they'll argue all day long about the shape and size and the you know the energy that's building the system, but at the end it's like yeah, the globe's a piece of crap. We all agree <laughs> that it, uh, NASA means never a straight answer. Yeah, never a straight answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, so. Is there any in the last minute here? Is there anything? Uh, and again, I'm not holding to this one minute thing. Right. You, you can make it three minutes if you want. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, Maybe if there's a, a, a good takeaway for the audience here, uh, you know, because, again, I would say there's probably 80 percent of my audience that is probably not on board with Flat Earth. I mean, oh, are, good. Then I then I got a message for him. Yeah. So maybe give the, your closing thoughts on that. OK, my closing thoughts are this. 
take everything I have said, flat earth or not, with a grain of salt. Um, I am not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to throw out some ideas and see if they resonate with you. But in the end, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. Meaning, do your own research. Don't be lazy. Do your own research. Ask questions. Uh, if you condemn it without research, researching it, that's just straight up ignorance. If you want to say that flat earthers are absolutely crazy, ask yourself why. And I'll, 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 I'll end it with this, with this quote, which is um, a quote from George Orwell. In fact, I'll read it this time. Normally, I just kind of paraphrase it, but I'm going to read it really fast. Um, George L. Royal wrote this in 1946. He said, most people have asked to prove that the earth is round, would not even bother to produce the rather weak arguments I've outlined above in the article. They would start off by saying that everyone knows the earth to be round and if pressed further would become angry. In a way, Shaw was right. This is a credulous age and the burden of knowledge which we now have to carry is partly responsible. And what he was saying is that science gets away with stuff because they're scientists. Just because somebody wears a lab coat doesn't mean that they're smarter than you. All right. So you have to ask yourself in 1946, how did everybody in the world know that it was a globe? NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. It wasn't that they knew, is that they were told. And those are two completely different things. You were told a lot of things by a lot of mainstream sources. Why do you believe them? Now, if you trust in mainstream implicitly, hey, great, fine, good for you. You know, take the blue pill, continue on your way. Um, but if you look into this, and I'm warning you, and this is my last parting shot. If you look into this, be careful because there is a point of no return, sort of like the matrix, yep. where once you get past it, you can't go back because there's nothing to go back to. If you were the one, remember, I wasn't the one. In the end, you'll have to figure out the globe thing for yourself. So if you tear down the globe yourself with your own hands and you change your mind later, tough luck because there's nothing to go back to and you're kind of stuck, which is why Rob said, you know, the day I ruined his life because he couldn't go back to his old life. He wanted to in some ways, but he couldn't. Once you're awake, like Neo, you can't be not awake. There you go. Well, uh, yeah, I mean... And by the way, there's a Matrix Four coming out. It's uh, I think it's out. In Why? <laughs> I, I think that maybe it's conditioning somehow. Just wait. There's gonna ha there's gonna be a message in there. Oh, <laughs> so long. I mean, come on. The first one was in '99. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, there's a huge fall. It's almost like uh, I mean, it's not quite Star Wars, but I think. I, I want to go fall. see it. No, no question. But it's like, what the hell happened? Why didn't the producers? You know, I know they went on to do. They transitioned, so they're they're trying. To... <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about what happened to the what what happens when you're creative and you have ridiculous amounts of money and then just no one to say no, just just go off on a tear. It's like, what happened to the directors? Well. <laughs> They're no longer the Wachowski brothers of the Wachowski uh, <laughs> In fact, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, that's a whole other conspiracy story where they weren't even the ones that freaking, they bought the Matrix off a, a, a female writer and oh. they never gave, never gave her credit for it. So, well, I, I mean, I, I think that there's something to the, the concept, but again, uh, oh, yeah. no, I like it. I like it. Double slick yeah. experiment. Look it up. It's, I mean, again, I was in the computer game industry for several years and, I can yeah. tell you, that's what we're striving for right now. Everyone's running. The irony. Everyone's running. Sorry, last last parting shot. You ready? This, this will be kind of a fun thing to end on, which is, um, do you remember the old Dilbert comic strip? Yep. Okay. The guy from there, he wrote this forward to this book, and he was saying the last, very insightful. He goes, the last invention we'll ever make as a civilization will be the holodeck. Mm -hmm. it, back then, you know, it was, the holodeck was it, right? Uh -oh. He goes, because once that's invented... No one will want to do anything else, which is why the Star Trek, that part of the Star Trek was just a joke because people would be fighting over the holodeck constantly. That's all you'd want to do. In fact, you'd only work long enough to pay for your holodeck time or your personal yeah. holodeck. That's all. And every company, every tech company is striving, running, doing whatever it can to try to make, to try to reach that. Not, not, not realizing that once they do, everything will change. So yeah. I don't know if they'll, I don't know if it'll be allowed. <clears throat> anyway uh, thank you yeah hey uh if you ever get a chance uh watch my interview uh, and it's horrible it's like my uh it was my first real big interview that i've ever done and it, i was just a mess but uh the guy uh his name's brian melvin okay uh, he had a near-death experience and uh okay. he, just think holodeck when you when you hear his near-death experience all right
because uh, that that's exactly the message that you'll get from it. So I'll take a look. Um, so, anyways, but uh, thanks, Mark, and uh, I'll let you get back to it. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to your future endeavors, <laughs> <laughs> whatever they may be. And uh, maybe we'll, yeah, stop by and visit when you come through Boise again. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, man. See you. All right. See ya. All right. Bye. -bye. bye.